Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today I'm trying to do something really fast. This is for a friend of mine. It's a 2010 Hyundai Elantra. I think it's an Elantra. I'll get to the specs here in a second. Uh, she called me or sent me a message, said, hey, my car is stalling at stops only. And I said, how does it run when you keep your foot on the gas? It runs beautiful, no check engine light, nothing like that. Just stalls when she comes to stops. She can keep it running by keeping her foot on the gas pedal. So to me, classic symptoms of a dirty throttle body, and that's what I told her. Now, things have changed since I scanned the car. We have a crankshaft position sensor fault code, and what my suspicions are, this being a VR type sensor, is potentially a weak crank sensor signal come down to a low speed, sensor signals weak as a characteristic of this kind of sensor, and combine that with a sensor that's failing. So a sensor that's producing less voltage than it should be, and therein lies our stalling problem. I, that's what I think. The other thing that clues me in on this is not a dirty throttle body, she told me that when it stalls, and I didn't find this out until I accepted the job, she told me that when it stalls, that she cranks it and restarts it, but the tachometer's not working. So she's gotta shut the key off and then restart it for the tach to start working again. And so I'm gonna take you guys with me. We're gonna look at some scan data. In fact, this car just stalled sitting here and I missed it. Let's get the scan tool on this, see what's going on. All right, first thing is I made a mistake. This is a 2014 Hyundai Elantra and it is a coupe, not that that matters, but this car did stall while I was talking to you guys, introducing this vehicle. And let's see if this is correct. I'm gonna restart it. It is now, I was gonna say it's a no crank or a no start. It did start long crank time there. Notice the tachometer is not working. Well, let's reproduce her complaint. Key is off, restart it. Very long crank time. And the tachometer is still not working and the check engine light is on. Amy, your check engine light was not on when you brought it to me. It now is. Yeah, crank position A circuit as a current code. Definitely, Amy, I'm speaking to the owner of this car who will probably watch this video. You definitely have a crank sensor fault. It was a maturing code. Now it has matured and it set the light. Go figure, it set it for me. So this is not a dirty throttle body as I originally suspected. For sure, it is not. You see I have an engine speed signal here on the scan tool. But this might be running solely off of the cam sensors alone as far as engine speed goes. That's my guess. Let me turn this off and uh, let this power down for a second. Yeah, very fast start time with the TAC operating. You see my engine speed is now reduced too, so there's some kind of default strategy where it's running the car at 1,000 RPM whenever it loses this crank signal. Let's watch this data parameter. Just don't want to miss it. I'm not going to hit the throttle. We're just going to watch the engine RPM. What I'm looking for though is a specific crank sensor data parameter. I'm not seeing one. I didn't check all the lists yet. If I was a betting man, I would definitely put a crank sensor in this right now. Given the symptoms, again, this type of crank sensor, it's a two-wire variable reluctance sensor, it means it makes its own voltage. It's a magnetic type sensor. It makes its own voltage, and sensors that create their own voltage use an AC sine wave, characteristically, if that's a word, have low voltage at low speeds. And so that's the tie-in with this and why the car is dying on her when she's letting her foot off the throttle when she's coming to stops. Engine RPM's low, crank sensor signal's weak. Combine that with a sensor that's failing. You know, it's normally weak at low speeds anyway. A failing sensor will be even weaker, and I think that's the tie-in here. And we were actually able to catch it. I just want this to stall again. Let's go drive this thing, try to make it do it, because I am not having success right now.
course it's not going to stall on me. It knows I'm here. Let's get some component info while we're while we're waiting. This is an inductive pickup type sensor used to detect rotational speed and position by interrupting a reluctor wheel attached to the camshaft. Wait, this is in position of the camshaft by interrupting a reluctor wheel attached to the camshaft. This shouldn't say camshaft, this is a crank sensor mounted on the front left of engine block near the transaxle case. Rough running stalling may be caused by crank sensor. Yep. Try shaking the sensor connector. See if it affects engine operation. Oh yeah. If tack, this is exactly us. If the tack reads zero while cranking, check for faulty crank or ignition problems. Sweet. All right. So where this is a mistake where they rip, listed this up here with the camshaft designation, but it says um, near transaxle case. So. Um, Front probing crank position sensor. It's a green and red wire. All right, let's go into the hood. Let's see if we can find it. There's the crank sensor connector right here. The green and red. Uh, what I've just done, I just put my yellow and black test leads on here. We're gonna go to our lab scope now. I'm gonna uh, get it reading off of this while we're waiting of course my setup goes just using one channel and we'll go 10 volt for now see what that looks like take our time base and increase it and then we'll move our line in the middle remember this is a variable reluctance sensor AC sine wave is what this is gonna make That's on the red wire. Pretty good looking signal. Let's see what the green one looks like just to do some circuit analysis here. So we have a signal on both wires, both the green and the red. Yeah, this is a this is a floating ground type sensor. If you look at the um, the sink notch that's in there, you'll see how it. It trails differently on the green as it does on the red. This is going to go from low to high where the gap is, and then the green goes from from high to low. So either one of these I can monitor. I just need this thing to stall. The wiring harness, I can't see where it goes. It goes underneath. And this, this is the connector for it, but the harness runs underneath that. It'd be real easy to get to from under the car, but I'm outside right now. One of the things is that is not a weak signal at all. Let's take this to a 20 volt, see that a little bit better. Pretty good looking crank signal. I'll turn our climate control off. Yeah, the defrost was on, that's why that fan was running. All right, good, the fan's off, now I can reach my hand down there. See if I can recreate this. Come on. I want to prove my fault. Get the sensor hot is what I need to do. Get it to fail. Can't really get it hot sitting here. I'm trying to prove the fault here. I'm not about guessing and changing parts. I want to see this crank sensor signal fail. I'm just trying to warm up the sensor. Usually these will fail when they get hot. Although it did stall on us when it was relatively cold. Uh, but this is actually a good time and a good lesson to show you guys the amplitude of the signal and how uh, I mentioned at low speeds, how the signal is lower uh, or weaker. If you look at the min-max voltage, so look at the height of the sine wave and watch what happens when I raise the RPM. You're gonna see that signal is gonna grow. So it gets tighter this way, of course, because RPM's faster. But see how much higher the amplitude is? That's just a characteristic of this kind of sensor. I believe my initial suspicions of it being a low voltage causing it to shut down may be incorrect. Uh, it may have to do with this sensor being 
dropping out while she's driving it and then when you come to a stop because it's running as a default probably off the cam sensor signals that um, that's why it's a it's an idle only stall this engine clearly can run with the cam sensor signals without the crank sensor that's why we have a long crank time that's why we're losing our tachometer I just want to prove it to you uh, if I was a I said maybe earlier if I was a betting man I'd put a crank sensor in that I still am saying that this car needs a crank sensor I just want to prove it I, I just I don't want to change a part without Amy I don't want to spend your money unless you absolutely need this so what I'm thinking though is um, this is a, a I think this is a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty on this and um, this is powertrain related I believe the crank sensor should be covered for you I mean it's got 43,000 miles on it Let's see if I can duplicate it I'll let you see what this looks like cranking speeds too because that's going to be important so you saw the signal cranking let's see if I can make this not start pedal putting the gas pedal to the floor that should make this thing not start nope see it cranking though how little the signal is and then it grows as the RPM changes couldn't get it to crank for longer than that that's what I was hoping for the downside of this is just me touching that thing can make it start working right I'm sure there's a connection issue at the sensor itself of course it did it once and that's it Lower time base and a higher scale, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. Watch the signal grow as I raise the RPM. Looks like minus six to about positive 15 volts so that's about a 20 volt peak to peak and if I were to compare the two wires together this would be about a 40 volt peak to peak so that's pretty impressive as far as the output voltage of this sensor Intermittent problems suck. Let's see if we can wiggle on it, make it die again. Just want to prove the crank sensor to you. All right, since we're looking at this at idle, and idle is when this thing dies, I'll, I'll readjust my scales again. We'll drop this down to a 10 volt. Cranking speeds, it's going to be even less than that, but that should be good for what we're doing. I'm seeing some anomalies in this signal Let's freeze this see that's that spike right there and that spike right there I don't know that that's necessarily a problem but it certainly could be the beginnings of showing the failing sensor I'm just gonna put a sensor in this guys I can't recreate it I apologize what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna simulate this problem 
by unplugging this crank sensor, I'm going to show you that this car is still going to run. That's what we want to see as far as data goes. And then we're not going to have a signal there. We'll go to the scanner. We'll show you the data on the scan tool while we're cranking it. Watch the tachometer. Long crank. No tack signal or no tack movement. And then of course my RPM is high again too. And uh, you see the desire, the computer wants it to be higher. It knows the crank sensor signal is missing. My options for this fault are the sensor, wiring, computer, that's it, that's it. And all I've done by unplugging that is just show you that this car, number one, can run without the crank signal. Number two, I simulated the fault by unplugging the sensor. And number three, all right, there's your long crank time too, okay? This is what you'd see with a dead sensor. See no signal there, of course, because I'm not plugged in. I just, I can't prove the sensor to you guys and I'm just, I think I'm done. So again, that was a simulated fault. Me unplugging the crank sensor. Plug this guy back in. nice if I could catch this not simulated but catch it doing it that's so frustrating See, the other thing too I'm thinking of guys is I, I um, you know, just by back probing this I could have fixed a pin contact problem right there at that connector. Maybe I tell her to drive it, see how it does. Tighten the pins, check the pins, check the contact of the pins, snug them up a little bit, plug it back in, give it back to her. I think it's worth doing because I'm just, I'm not able to duplicate it now. So a little lesson on back probing there to you guys, you know. Um, you can fix things when you back probe components. Snug these connectors up. They were, these are actually very easy to um, tighten back up. Pretty sure the camera didn't catch the gap in that, but that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna clear these fault codes. I do not want to put a sensor in this yet. We're gonna give this back to Amy. Let's hope for a no cost fix for her. That is a much tighter connector. We are gonna grab the signal one more time, take a look at it. I just found it interesting that I couldn't duplicate it. She's been having this problem over and over and over again. You know, I, I maybe back probed it too soon. If I would have not back probed the connector, um, we may have, may have been able to catch it on film. Let's see what, what this looks like and let this thing go. Of course, it doesn't look any different but lesson learned for sure. Back probing components. I don't know if that temporarily fixed it or not, but I'm gonna give this car back to my friend, have her drive it. I will clear the fault codes on this. We know exactly where we're going if it comes back. And uh, I'm not worried about wiring. I shook the harness, look for any spots under here of rub through all the way from the sensor to the computer, which is right there. So I'm, I'm not uh, worried about that. This crank sensor com code comes back again, it will get a crank sensor. So not a great finish for this one, guys. I hope you learned something from it. If you need more information on the operation of these variable reluctance sensors, also known as magnetic impulse sensors, um, 
pickup coils. They go by a ton of different names. Um, I have information on this in chapter 21 in my textbook that's available at scannerdanner.com. You can also join me online for some more training too on Scanner Danner Premium. Guys, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.